You asked us in the comments, and today we're delivering that we're talking about the most delicious form of 3D printing, food! Additively manufactured 3D printed food, of course, machines and uh, different companies that are doing it, so you might even get a 3D printed meal very soon. Now, we're not quite at Star Trek replicators yet, so don't get too excited, but let's get right into it. Generally speaking, 3D printed food is a meal prepared through an automated additive process. Uh, think of those pizza vending machines that surfaced back in 2015. The dough is prepared uh, and extruded and then topped with tomato sauce and cheese and finally sent to the oven all within the same machine. Now, in 2020, we have exclusive 3D printing restaurants and dozens of food printers available on the market. So, which foods can be 3D printed? Material extrusion is by far the most common process for 3D printing food, and similar to FDM 3D printing, think of all the possible combinations between doughs and mashes and cheeses, frostings, and even raw meats. Now, uh, the question is, do most of these food 3D printers cook the food? Generally not. Uh, food 3D printers are mostly suited for architecting intricate shapes and designs, not actually cooking the ingredients. Usually the edibles are either ready for consuming or will be cooked in an external oven or grill once the 3D printing process is done. Chocolate, for example, is ready to eat right off the bill plate. Now, there are some exceptions, uh, like the Pancake Bot, which is a machine that only makes pancakes by extruding the batter directly onto a hot plate. It still requires somebody to flip it, but everything else is done with the same equipment. This is actually one of my favorite things. I saw an Einstein portrait printed on a pancake printer at the last Rapid TCT. It was really, really cool, and I got to eat part of it, which I think might have made me smarter. So, where can you go and get some 3D printed food? Uh, well, today it's mostly used in gourmet dining, uh, be it in the molecular kitchens or fancy bakeries. Uh, but back in 2016, two world-class chefs created a new restaurant concept in London named Food Inc. I -N -K. The idea, at first, was just to serve 3D printed dishes, but eventually they went as far as having only 3D printed furniture in the entire restaurant. Food Inc. is currently a traveling restaurant, uh, and it's actually on a world tour. Well, I mean, not sure with COVID and everything, but it's a pretty cool deal. Now, it's not only in fine dining that you can find this 3D printed food, but bakers have made headlines for printing edible wedding cake decorations, and for all you pizza lovers, 3D printed pizzas are coming. Now, your best chances to get some of this food is actually at 3D printing events or culinary conventions, such as uh, 3D food printing conferences, as this new technology has not really gotten to the commercial success point yet. So let's talk a little bit about the pros and cons of 3D printing foods. On the pros side, we've got personalizing meals. In terms of controlling the diversity and amount of nutrients, vitamins, and calories per meal, 3D printing food allows for precision. This can be extremely important in hospitals where restricted diets are more common, and it offers the potential for easy patient customization. Also for unconventional food consumption, you know, when you're processing uh, nutritious plants or protein-rich insects in a semi-liquid state, these foods could be presented in a much more attractive way uh, and thus incentivize their consumption. There's also the case of easy reproducibility. Sharing recipes could be as simple as transferring a digital file over the internet. All that would be required is the same raw materials, printing settings, and compatible printing equipment. Uh, now, on the, on the con side, you know, it comes down to simplicity and complexity. A very simple six-layer design could take seven minutes to print, while a more detailed 3D model can take up to 45 minutes. Now, it might not sound like much at first, but at these speeds, you know, if you're trying to serve a ton of people, that's kind of why we see it in the gourmet section right now. It takes a while to get that food out to you. Uh, the cost of the equipment is also kind of a barrier to entry, and the consumables for the equipment, it's not exactly cheap yet. Now, the edibles used in these machines either generally require uh, pre-cooking or pre-processing to achieve the consistency required for extrusion, and the reproducibility and reliability for the, these machines depend heavily on the proper preparation, which means more processed food, which, as everyone knows, is not necessarily quite as healthy. So, how do you design these 3D foods? Uh, plenty of the printers out there right now come with proprietary software that actually support part designing. These are usually practical and user-friendly applications that limit the tools required for intricate 3D projects. Now, for the most part, though, that's all the printers can really handle in terms of complexity. Still, for those wanting to take their food 3D printing to the next level, traditional 3D modeling techniques should work just fine, just being mindful of the individual processes required by each print printer and each Food, you might need to consider some special formats. Now, I met a guy at Form Next last year who was walking around and he actually scanned a local cathedral and 3D printed it out of chocolate. That could be a really awesome business plan, uh, so definitely something to consider. 
Now, what machines are available today? Let's get right into that. We've got the Bifo Focus. Now, it might not seem like much, but this small printer is capable of grand things. The Focus is a material extrusion 3D printer used by professional chefs around the world. It uses reusable cartridges or syringes that can be filled with edible pastes. Michelin star restaurants like Smink in the Netherlands use this printer for intricate dessert patterns. The Biflow costs around $4,300, uh, so it's not cheap, but it's pretty cool. We got the M-Muse chocolate 3D printer, and it's unique in the sense that it processes chocolate chips up to four millimeters in diameter and then melts them. So think pellet extrusion. It's actually quite sturdy, weighing around 25 kilograms or 55 pounds, but it's still within the desktop size range. It's manufactured in China and is pretty expensive at about $5,700. Next, we've got the Fudini. Now, this is one of the most hyped food 3D printers of all, and deservedly so. Natural Machines Fudini can handle almost any ingredient, from jellies to burger meat, using five different cartridges simultaneously. Natural Machines has a healthy nutrition approach, providing recipes for new users to start from. The Fudini is around $4,000. Next, we've got the MyCuisini. The MyCuisini is a chocolate 3D printer just released by a German startup Print to Taste, and uh, it came from a Kickstarter project. It's compact enough for your kitchen countertop with an internal battery to let you go off-grid for up to two hours. The stainless steel cartridges are easy to fill and clean, but the refills must be purchased directly from Print to Taste. Think uh, closed material systems. The MyCuisini starts around $370, so it's actually pretty, seems like a pretty good deal. Next, we've got the Pancake Bot, and this is, uh, as mentioned before, this is one of my favorites. Uh, the Portrait of Einstein, or pictures uh, in full grayscale glory on the side of your pancake. I mean, think about it. The first version was released after a successful Kickstarter campaign, and the latest Pancake Bot V2 boasts more control over the print settings, and it's got a simpler user interface. Uh, as mentioned before, it includes a heated surface so that the batter can be cooked as it's printed. And that's how they got the grayscale. You know, the first part to get printed is a little bit darker than the stuff printed at the end. Uh, the Pancake Bot 2.0 retails for about $300. I might actually get one of these things. Next, we've got the Pro Cuisini. The Pro Cuisini 4.0 is another food 3D printer from print to taste, but it's aimed at the prosumer market. This machine is about $2,600, and it could potentially handle small events catering. The cartridges can be heated up to 60 Celsius during the printing to aid the extrusion of thicker materials like marzipan or fondant for cake decoration. And uh, you can make some pretty cool designs with a robot, I think. The Pro Cuisini is advertised as a plug-and-play system, and just like the My Cuisini, the printer's refills also must be purchased directly from the manufacturer. In sort of more open machines, we've got the Wasp 2040. This desktop 3D printer was outfitted with a modification of its LDM clay extrusion system to print pastes and mashes. In fact, the Italian 3D printer manufacturer started a project back in 2017 to use their printers to produce gluten-free dishes. Next, we've got the Zmorph Thick Paste Extruder. This machine's modular tool head was specifically designed to extrude thick pastes such as chocolate, cheese, dough, and even avocado. Now, while these modified FDM printers probably won't perform as well as a dedicated food printing machine, uh, you would still have a functional 3D printer for non-edible materials at the same time. Next, we've got the Structure 3D Discovery. Now, this is a third-party paste extrusion system that is said to work with almost any 3D printer. Uh, with the Arduino ramps boards, it can be a very cost-effective solution for your 3D printed food cravings. And next, we've got the Weebook Sweeten. At around two grand, this machine will print a variety of pastes, and you gotta love the company name. Uh, and, you know, we've also got the CreateBot 3D food printer at around $2,100, and this also does various pastes. So, moving forward, uh, 3D printed food has a huge future in space exploration as NASA and other private companies are already planning missions to Mars. According to NASA, such missions will take between one and three years to complete, and the agency is currently looking into ways to enhance their life aboard the ships. It's no surprise to us, but enhancements include tasty and delicious 3D printed food. With this technology, it would be an automated way to produce meals in space, but 3D printing can also 
add to the looks and the diversity of dishes. Indeed, NASA has partnered with a Texas-based company, Systems and Materials Research Corporation, or SMRC, to develop both the 3D printers and the food for this purpose. SMRC has already come up with a pizza printing system that uses a combination of powdered foods containing the necessary nutrients. So as you can see, there's a ton of different applications already developed in this completely random sector of 3D printing. So here at Vision Miner, we actually specialize in high temperature, high performance thermoplastics like Peak, Ultim, and PSU, many of which are food safe and can actually be used in food production. So we've got customers making coffee filters, coffee makers, pour overs, and uh, other things in the support for manufacturing. So you can print parts and everything that are used in manufacturing facilities and things of that nature. I've seen shoes and tubes and all kinds of stuff getting used. It's very, very cool stuff. And we also sell all the machines and the tools to make it easy and the service if you don't want to do it yourself. I've even had Jay come in one day and I caught him cooking a steak on these things. They're high temperature printers. It's crazy. I actually did heat up soup one time and we've always joked about cooking a pizza. So, I mean, maybe we sell 3D, food 3D printers? No, not really, not really. Anyway, <laughs> leave a comment down below and let us know what you thought of this content and leave a comment with what you want us to do next. What kind of crazy things are out there that you want us to cover in a video like this? We love hearing from you guys. And so give us a call if you're into it. Otherwise, have a positive rest of your day and I'll see you on the next video.